method for fixed axis rotation when the axis of rotation is fixed then we have a formula for tackling the problems without going to the center of mass frame suppose this rigid body is pivoted at this point p assuming that friction is absent then only you can call it smooth pivot when the rigid body is pivoted smoothly at this point this axis passing through this point if you take horizontal is x axis vertical is y axis this axis which passes through the pivot is known as z axis so here the axis of rotation is z axis since the pivot is fixed is fixed we can say that z axis or axis of rotation is fixed or it is a case of fixed axis rotation for fixed axis rotation when the pivot is fixed we can call this type of rotation fixed axis rotation let us assume that the rigid body spins in clockwise direction so omega can be written as omega into minus kk because clockwise direction or inward direction or minus kk all the notations are equivalent for this fixed axis rotation we have an alternate method to find different parameters like the reaction force offered by the pivot its x component its y component the angular acceleration the acceleration of the center of mass all this you can calculate by method other than the center of mass method therefore i put it as alternate method for fixed axis rotation in this method first of all we have to develop newton's second law and we have law of translation and law of rotation let us first calculate the angular momentum so for this let us take an element of the rigid body 
at radial distance r with respect to the axis. Since we have assumed the clockwise rotation of this rigid body, this element will move with a speed which is equal to r into omega as you discussed in the chapter of rotational kinematics and this line of motion or the velocity is perpendicular to the r vector. Since this point is fixed, this element will move in a circular path. Therefore, this velocity is equal to r into omega where r is the radius of the circle. Traced by the element of mass in the air. Its angular momentum about the axis which passes through this point P that is Z axis can be given as DLZ or you can write DLP is equal to its mass into the radial distance into the velocity and the angle between these two is 90 degree therefore, sin 90 is 1 and the sense is clockwise that is equal to d m r into v minus k f clockwise sense or minus k f both are equal. If you sum of all the angular momenta all the elements of the rigid body about the z axis passing through this pi hot, we can get the total angular momentum of the rigid body. So, the total angular momentum, the total angular momentum of the rigid body about the axis which passes through this pi hot is the summation of the elementary angular momenta that is equal to d m r v minus k f. Since this is a constant factor pull it out of the integral to have integral d m r v where v can be written as r into omega because this point or the element is moving in a circular path about this point p. Then we have the angular momentum of the rigid body about z axis is equal to minus k f 
d m into r into instead of v I can write r omega integral of this factor. Here omega is a constant quantity for all the points all the points of the rigid body they move with same omega with respect to this pi hat. Therefore, this omega is a constant quantity for the rigid body it is called the angular velocity of the rigid body. Then you can pull it out of the integral. So, we are left behind with this variable term r square dm integral can be written as the moment of inertia of the rigid body about this point p. So, i p into omega k k minus minus omega k k vector can be written as omega vector. So, the angular momentum which is the vector quantity can be written as the summation or the integration of the angular momenta of all the elements of the rigid body about the given axis which passes through the pi hat. So, in this way we are getting the angular momentum of the rigid body as the product of its moment of inertia about this pi hat and its angular velocity. Then we have to differentiate both sides with respect to time t once. Well, so this rigid body which is phi at this point rotates with an angular velocity omega, its angular momentum will be equal to i p into omega where i p is the moment of inertia of the rigid body about this point. After we calculate the angular momentum of the rigid body about this point, differentiate both sides with respect to time once to get d l p by d t is equal to i p into d omega by d t. We know that the rate of change of angular momentum about any point is equal to the net torque experienced by the rigid body about that point and the rate of change of angular velocity is equal to angular acceleration. This is the kinematics of rigid body. This is the dynamics part of the rigid body. Now, substitute dl by dt is tau or the torque and d omega by dt is alpha to get tau p is equal to i p into alpha. This is called the equation for rotation of the rigid body about this fixed axis. 
So you need not take the torque about the center of mass. That method already we have discussed and we got this formula. You choose this pi hat as the fixed point of reference and about this point you take the torque of all forces acting on the rigid body from outside or the external torque that is the net torque because internal torque repeatedly I have told that it is internal torque is always 0 and equate it to the product of the moment of inertia of the rigid body about this point and its angular acceleration. So, I will tell you another method to obtain the same expression by using parallel axis theorem which states that the moment of inertia about this point is equal to moment of inertia about the centroidal point plus mass into the square of the distance of separation between these two points provided the axis passing through these two points are parallel to each other. Let me proceed to get the same expression by using the parallel axis theorem. Let us take the rigid body you pivoted here at this point you take a segment and you calculate the angular momentum of each segment each element about this point and add it up and you got the expression L phi is equal to I phi into omega and differentiate both sides to get del L phi 1 dt is equal to I phi into d omega 1 dt. And this is equal to the net torque experienced by the object above this point or axis passing through that point is equal to moment of inertia of the rigid body about this point into the angular acceleration of the rigid body. Using that method, you got this expression. Using another technique, also you can get the expression. The technique is the parallel axis theorem. This method one. This parallel axis theorem states that the moment of inertia about the center of mass axis plus m r square is equal to i p. Well, this is a question one. We can prove that angular momentum of the rigid body about this point, the reference point P is equal to angular momentum of the same rigid body about the center of mass point C plus angular momentum of the center of mass with respect to the reference point plus angular momentum of the center of mass with respect to this reference point. The center of mass moves with velocity v c and this is the position vector of the center of mass with respect to this given point p. So, m v c here r c r c cross m v c this is angular momentum of the rigid body with respect to center of mass. This is the angular momentum of the center of mass with respect to the reference point 
and we know that angular momentum of the rigid body with respect to center of mass m is equal to the moment of inertia of the rigid body with respect to center of mass into omega omega does not depend upon any reference point angular velocity of the rigid body is the internal property of the body at that instant it doesn't depend upon the reference point so with respect to this point same omega with respect to this point same omega with respect to this point same omega with respect to any point outside the rigid body also same omega omega of the rigid body the angular velocity of the rigid body must not be confused with angular velocity of a point inside the rigid body with respect to a point outside the rigid body as i explained in the last class now you substitute the angular momentum of the rigid body with respect to the center of mass axis in this formula to get lp is equal to i c omega plus R C cross M V C. Since this point is fixed, this point moves in a circular path. As shown in the dotted line, the dotted circle. This path is traced by the center of mass of radius R C, and this velocity. Of the center of mass is Vc is perpendicular to the radius vector. Therefore, Rc cross Vc is equal to Rc Vc sine 90 degree. And the direction direction is clockwise or minus kf plus the direction of omega is clockwise. Omega minus kk. In this way, you can write by taking the kk out of the bracket. I c plus. I c omega plus. R c m v c. Since v c is equal to R into omega, because this point is moving in circular path. We have L P is equal to minus k cap I C into omega plus R C M into instead of V C, you can write R omega. R means R C. R C into R C is R C square. K K F I C Omega you take common minus Omega K K F into I C plus M R C square and this is can be written as I P equal to I C plus M R C square by parallax theorem we can write it as. I P omega into minus k cap can be written as omega vector into I P that's equal to I P into omega that is the angular momentum about this pivot. We are adding some expression by using this technique. Once you obtain this expression, you differentiate both sides with respect to time t once to get the same expression. Tau p is equal to i p into alpha, and using this expression and writing the other expressions and kinematical expressions, we can also solve the motion of the rigid body, which is constrained to rotate about a fixed axis. 
let me take some examples this rod is pivoted at one of its end freely if you release the rod when you release the rod at this instant find angular acceleration find the acceleration of the center of mass and we need to calculate the normal reaction we have solved this problem by using the center of mass method the general method now let us use this method where we take the torque of all external forces about the pi watt and equate it to i p into alpha if we draw the free body diagram we have the gravitational force which is acting at the center of mass a normal reaction which is pushing the rod at this point and another reaction force nx pushing the rod at this point horizontally the horizontal reaction force vertical reaction force these two forces pass through this point therefore they cannot produce a torque about that point hence the torque is produced by the gravitational force only the gravity will produce a torque in clockwise sense that is equal to mg into this distance if l is the length of the rod then this distance is l by 2 mg l by 2 is the torque whose direction inward or minus k cap direction i p the moment of inertia of this rod if it is uniform that is m r square by 3 into alpha this gives us alpha is equal to Three by two j by l minus k cap, or clockwise, or in. So we got alpha. To get the acceleration of the center of mass, we have to write the force equation as usual. F is equal to m into center of mass acceleration or the net force along y direction along x direction f y is equal to m into a c y since omega of the rod is zero the center of mass acceleration along x direction is zero as we discussed because center of mass moves in a circular path about the pivot as discussed earlier when omega is zero the center of mass acceleration along x direction that is the radial acceleration will be equal to r omega square will be equal to 0 when this is 0 the net force along x direction that is nx is equal to 0 no reaction force 
रफर्ड बाई दाइव हट अलॉन्ग द रॉड और हरिजेंडल डायरेक्शन नेक्स्ट टू राइट न्यूटन सेकेंड लॉ और ट्रांसलेशन अलॉन्ग वर्टिकल डायरेक्शन नेट फोर्स एक्टिंग ऑन द रॉड अलॉन्ग द वर्टिकल डायरेक्शन इज इक्वल टू माइनस एम जे जैक एफ प्लस एन वाई जैक एफ बिकॉज दिस इज अप दिस इज डाउन इज इक्वल टू मास टाइम्स लेट एस एजम दैट एक्सप्रेस ऑफ द रॉड इज डाउन एज सोन इन द फिगर देर फोर दिस कैन बी रिटर्न एज माइनस ए सी जैक एफ दिस गिव्स एस एन माइनस एम जे एज इक्वल माइनस ए सी और एम जी माइनस एन इज इक्वल एम इन टू ए सी दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर वन दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर टू दिस डॉमी इक्वेशन वी डोंट नीड दिस वेन दे आस्क यू टू कैलकुलेट एन एक्स दिस इज द प्रोसीजर और वेन उमेगा इज गिव हेन एज यू डॉन इन द लास्ट क्लास this reaction force will be non zero because the center of mass will accelerate along the horizontal direction but in negative x direction towards the center of the circular path that is the pivot next to write kinematical equation this is the rotation equation equation for rotation or Better to write torque equation, and these equations are called force equations. Next, kinematics. Since the center of mass is moving in a circular path, AC is the axis of the center of mass along this direction is zero this is the tangential direction therefore we can write this at but at equal to r into alpha ac y is equal to along y direction because along x direction that is zero ac y is equal to tangential acceleration that's equal to r alpha and uh, radius of the circular path is equal to l by 2 where l is the length of the rod this is uh, kinematics of circular motion well this is equation number 3 since uh, there is no x component no horizontal component the net acceleration of the center of mass will be equal to l by 2 into alpha because here the rod is released from rest omega is zero initially it is given under this condition AC is equal to R L by two into alpha. AC is equal to L by two into alpha. Substitute the value of AC from equation three to equation two. Using equation two and three, we can get. mg minus n is equal to m into ac ac equal to l by 2 into alpha and alpha value from the first equation you have to set is equal to m l by 2 alpha will be equal to how much is magnitude so we don't take the direction minus kk is the direction the magnitude is equal to 3g by 2l L L will be getting cancelled. So m g minus n is equal to three m g by four. Therefore n will be equal to m g by four. Answer. So we got the normal reaction. An acceleration is equal to L by two into alpha. An alpha is equal to three z by two l. L will be cancelled from numerator and denominator to have three g by four. Answer. In this way, 
we can calculate all this parameters alpha angular acceleration linear acceleration of the center of mass and normal reaction or the reaction force n y n x is if they will ask you to calculate n x you can just write n x will be 0 because omega is 0 here if omega is not 0 n x will be equal to m into s e x if omega is not equal to 0 s e x will be equal to radial acceleration in which direction in negative x direction that is equal to l by 2 into omega square so when omega is not equal to 0 n x will be equal to m l by 2 into omega square if you take s e x in positive direction you are getting a negative result what does it mean you have taken n x in positive x direction but you are getting a negative result therefore the pivot will pull the rod in this direction if omega is not equal to 0 but in this problem we have taken omega 0 the rod is released from rest from the given position therefore n x will vanish and n y will be there so net reaction force is vertical at this instant so this is the procedure by using an alternate method for fixed axis rotation which allows us to take the torque of the axonal forces about the pivot. In this procedure, the torque equation will be simplified because these two forces pass through this pivot cannot produce a torque, only you have to take the torque of gravity about this pivot. Now, a interesting a very interesting thing we would like to discuss here and I will try to relate it with a fact what we have discussed in the last class. So, let us take another problem. The disc is pivoted at this point of its periphery. Mass of the disc is m, gravity x at the center of mass of the disc. The radius of the disc is r. We need to calculate the reaction force. the angular acceleration and the center of mass acceleration. If omega of the rigid body that is the disk at the given instant is 0, then let us to mention the pivot is smooth. To solve the problem, we have this alternate method which starts that torque about the pivot is equal to moment of inertia about the pivot into the angular acceleration of the rigid body to the center of mass. If you draw the FBD, let us assume that reaction force offered by the pivot to the disc be R x along x direction, R y along y direction and these are all the chosen directions. This is the gravity which acts at the center of mass. These three forces are acting. 
these are the component forces, component of the reaction force. If you consider the reaction force, one force, gravity is the second force, we can say that uh, these two forces are acting, but we have taken the reaction force as components. In this way, we have three forces. Under the action of these three forces, the disc rotates. The first equation is to take the torque. The first equation we have to take the torque of all external forces, external force number 1, external force number 2, external force number 3. These two external forces pass through this point. Therefore, they cannot produce a torque about this point. The torque is produced by the gravitational force at this point that is equal to mg into r in clockwise sense is equal to ip ip we have to calculate where ip is equal to ic plus m r square. Another concept called parallel axis theorem. And I say for the disk is m r square by 2 as we have calculated plus m. The distance between two parallel axis is equal to radius of the disk. This gives us I p is equal to 3 by 2 m r square. Now, substitute I p in this equation to get minus m g r is equal to 3 by 2 m r square into alpha vector. And alpha vector is equal to After simplifying the factor, we can get 2 by 3 g by r minus kf. Minus kf gives us direction of alpha and 2 g by 3 r gives the magnitude of alpha. Minus k cap signifies that alpha is in clockwise direction or inward. So, we have calculated alpha. For fixed axis rotation, the center of mass moves in a circular path. Since omega naught is 0, its acceleration along the x direction or radial direction is 0. Only acceleration will be along y direction in this case or tangential direction. Since omega is 0, radial acceleration is equal to r into omega will be equal to 0 and tangential acceleration is equal to r into alpha. Radius of the circular path is equal to radius of the disk in this case into alpha. Alpha you got 2 g by 3 r. Two G by three R into R that is equal to two by three into G, and that is the total acceleration of the center of mass. Because there is no radial acceleration, so total acceleration or net acceleration of the center of mass is tangential acceleration. That is two by three into G. Next, we need to calculate a reaction force. As you discussed, Rx or R radial is 0 and Ry or R tangential is equal to, we have to calculate this by using Newton second law of translation, which states that F is equal to ma in which direction y direction suppose 
नेट फोर्स एक्टिंग ऑन द ऑब्जेक्ट अलॉन्ग वाई डायरेक्शन इज इक्वल टू आर वाई माइनस एम जी एज वी हैव डॉन अर्लियर जैकर एम एन टू ए वाई वी हैव चोजन वर्टिकल एक्सलरेशन डाउन एंड दैट इज इक्वल टू आर अल्फा ए वाई इज इक्वल टू आर अल्फा इन हुई डायरेक्शन माइनस जेकेब डायरेक्शन दिस गिवस एस आर माइनस एम जी इज आर वाई माइनस एम जी इज इक्वल एम आर अल्फा सब चोर दी वैल्यू ऑफ अल्फा मैग्नीच्योर एम आर अल्फा इज इक्वल टू जी बाय थ्री आर दैट गिवस एस आर वाई इज इक्वल टू Where minus sign will be there. R y will be equal to m g by three. So the net reaction force is equal to R y, that is m g by three. In this way, we can solve the problems of fixed axis rotation of any object by using the alternate method which says that torque of all the external forces about the pivot is equal to moment of inertia of the object about the pivot into the acceleration the angular acceleration of the rigid body needless to mention it does not depend upon the reference points it may be pivot it may be center of mass it may be inside any point it it can be outside any point it remains same for all the points at the given instant